This series on margins is now going to introduce some definitions. We begin with the gain margin. So the first video demonstrated the importance of the distance of the Nyquist diagram from the minus one point. Now we're assuming simple closed loop diagrams a bit like this. Um, you'll see there's a compensator M and a compensator G and typically for convenience we're just going to use M of S equals K for now. We'll um, be a bit more elaborate later on. Now what we want to know is what do we mean by distance from the minus one point? So we've established that the further you are from the minus one point it tends to be that you get better behaviour. But we also noticed that there was this concept of close and far. You can be too close, but you can also be too far. So what we want in this video is to start being more precise. What do we mean by these words? Can we give some more formal definitions? We're going to start by defining some distances, gain and phase margins. And we're going to start here with the gain margin. First then, why are we going to use the word gain margin. Well the reason is that a margin is how much space you have between yourself and a boundary. Now a particular boundary that we might be interested in is instability. If we go too close to minus one or if we get past the minus one we end up unstable. So a margin is how much space in gain have we got before we go through the minus one point. All right? Or in other words how much change in gain am I allowed before I go through the minus one point. And this is called the gain margin. And we're often going to just summarize it as GM for convenience. Now, a key thing you need to note is this change is considered as multiplicative. So when we say how much can we change gain, we mean how much can I change the multiplier before I go closed loop unstable. Here's an example then. You'll see we've given you the Nyquist diagram of a system. Now the particular system we've got here is actually 1 over s, s plus 1 squared, you'll see, because we've said here we've chosen k to be 1. Now this system, you'll see, intercepts the negative real axis at minus 0 0.5. And so gain margin was defined as how much can I change the multiplying factor, the k, in order to go through minus 1. So in other words, what I want to do is take this point and say what multiplier will give me minus 1. Well clearly minus 0 0.5 times k equals minus 1 tells me that k equals 2. So the allowable multiplying factor k in this case is 2 and therefore that is your gain margin. For this particular system, the gain margin is defined as 2. If I multiply by a number bigger than 2, I will end up closed loop unstable. Here's a different example. You'll notice it's squeezed in the top here. g equals 1 over s plus 1 cubed. Now, this gives you this blue plot here. And you might not be able to see it particularly well, but there's an intercept there with a negative real axis, which is minus 0.125, or minus 1 over 8, for those who are familiar with this algebra. So again, the question is, how's the gain margin defined? How much can I multiply by to get through the minus 1 point, and the minus 1 point being here? So what I do is I go minus 0.125 times k equals minus 1, and you'll see this gives me k equals 8. And lo and behold, you'll see if I choose k equals 8, what happens to the Nyquist diagram? It goes through the minus 1 point, exactly as expected. So in this particular case, the gain margin is 8. I can multiply by 8, and I'll go through minus 1. If I multiply by less than 8, I will remain closed loop stable. If I multiply by more than 8, I'll become closed loop unstable. Now, we've defined the gain margin. Here we're going to put a little bit more precision on it so that you can do some problem solving. So what we're doing is we're saying find a real number k 
and it's important here that it's real, such that g of j omega times k equals minus 1. That's the problem we were actually solving. We were saying, find me a k so that my Nyquist diagram goes through minus 1. And the Nyquist diagram is g of j omega. Now, in order to solve this, it means there must exist a frequency omega such that the argument of g of j omega is minus 180 degrees. Because we're assuming that k is a positive number, so the negative has got to come from the g of j omega. So that must have an argument, minus 180. If I rephrase this, in order for the gain margin to exist, okay, then the Nyquist diagram has to cross the negative real axis, because the negative real axis is where you have an argument of minus 180 degrees. So if I don't cross the negative real axis, it means there doesn't exist an omega which gives me minus 180 degrees, and that means I can't solve this simple problem up here. So here's an alternative definition of gain margin, just for convenience. You find the intercept A with the negative real axis, and the gain margin is 1 over A. And hopefully that's obvious, because you're saying I've got minus A times K equals minus 1, which gives me K equals 1 over A. I should have put minus modulus of A there, shouldn't I? So I get 1 over the modulus of A. Now, in order to do this computation, we said that the gain margin was defined where the argument of g is minus 180 degrees. So there's an interesting observation. In order to find the gain margin, you have to start with the phase. Okay? So the gain margin is defined where the phase is minus 180. So the first thing you should be doing is, for example, looking at your bow diagram if you've got it, finding minus 180 and saying where do I have minus 180 degrees and this is defined as the phase crossover frequency and the reason you might call it a crossover frequency is if you look at this Bode diagram it's where the Bode diagram crosses the minus 180 degree line Okay, so where the phase crosses the minus 180 degree line, this is called the phase crossover frequency. And this is the frequency you need in order to calculate the gain margin. So remember this, I've given it a subscript P, a subscript for phase. So W subscript P, phase crossover frequency. So what's the procedure for finding the gain margin? First, you find the f where the phase is minus 180 degrees, which in other words means find the phase crossover frequency, omega p. And if I put that in maths equation, it means solve this problem here. Solve argument of g of j omega p equals minus 180. Once you've done that, find the gain of the system at this frequency, so the modulus of g of j omega p. And then the intercept will be minus 1 over the modulus of g of j omega p. Oh, sorry, I've not, that shouldn't be, uh, it should just be minus modulus of g j omega p. And therefore the gain margin is given like this, 1 over the modulus of g of j omega p. So hopefully you'll see a very, very simple procedure. First, find the phase crossover frequency, omega p, and then the gain margin is given by this formula here, 1 over the modulus of g of j omega p. So what we're going to do is go through this procedure for a few examples so you can see how it works. So step number one, find the phase crossover frequency, which is where the argument of g is minus 180. So in this particular case, the argument of g is minus 90, minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega, minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 2, and that's going to give me minus 90, minus 10 to the minus 1, and I'm going to use my formula for adding two tan inverses together. So I get omega plus omega over 2, over 1 minus omega squared over 2, and this I've got to set equal to minus 180. And you'll notice I've got a minus 90 here, and a minus 180 here. So if I combine those two together, so for example, if I cross that, 
and cross that, I end up with a minus 90 here. You'll then notice I've got a minus here and a minus here. So what I end up with is tan to the minus 1 of omega plus omega over 2 over 1 minus omega squared over 2 equals 90. Now, what this tells me is that the bit in the brackets here has got to be equal to infinity because tan to the minus 1 of infinity will give me 90. And if the thing in the brackets is infinity, what that tells me is this bit here has got to equal 0. So what you end up with is 1 minus omega squared over 2 equals 0 or omega squared equals 2. So that defines your phase crossover frequency. And then how is the gain margin defined? Well, the gain margin is therefore going to be 1 over the modulus of g of j root 2. So remember, you put in the phase crossover frequency, which here is root 2. So now I need to know how to find the gain. So I'm going to get the square root of 2 times 2 plus 1 times 2 plus 4 all over 1, and you'll see this gives me the square root of 2 times 3 times 6, which is just 6. So in this particular case, your gain margin is 6. Here's another example, a very similar one, just to reinforce the procedure. So again, we start by writing the argument of g is minus 90 minus tan to the minus 1 omega over 3, minus tan to the minus 1 omega over 4, and I use my tan formula to add those together. I get minus 90 minus tan to the minus 1 omega over 3 plus omega over 4 over 1 minus omega squared over 12, and that's got to be minus 180. And if I use the same trick as on the previous page, you'll see this denominator is going to have to equal 0, so I get 1 minus omega squared over 12 equals 0, which implies omega squared equals 12. And then I define my gain margin as 1 over the modulus of g of j root 12, which in this particular case is going to give me the square root of 12 times 12 plus 9 times 12 plus 16 all over 1. And those um, bright ones among you will notice that this square root has got some quite nice patterns in it. You'll see I've got 12 times, now 12 plus 9 is 21, which is 3 times 7. And 12 plus 16 is 28, which is 4 times 7. Now, if you look under that square root, you'll see there's two 7s, there's a 12, there's a 3, and a 4. So, in fact, what you've ended up with, if I've not made, um, a, and actually it wasn't divided by 1, I do apologise, I've forgotten that 2. It was divided by 2. We better put that back in. So, what you end up with is 12 times 7 over 2 which is 42. Final example then. Find the gain margin for this system. So again, we start by looking for the phase crossover frequency. So I do argument of g is minus 90 minus tan to the minus 1 of omega over 3 equals minus 180. That's what we're trying to solve. And what you notice is you cannot solve. OK, the argument of g here never gets to minus 180. It approaches minus 180 asymptotically, but it doesn't actually cross the negative real axis at any point. And therefore, the gain margin equals infinity. You can change the gain by as much as you like, and you will not get through the minus 1 point. And if I do a Nyquist sketch, just so that you can see what's going on, your Nyquist diagram does something like this. And you'll see it doesn't matter how much you multiply 
the Nyquist diagram by, I can make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but you'll see it never actually goes through the minus one point, and that's why the gain margin is infinity. So, we've introduced one measure of distance from the minus one point. This is the gain margin. But the next question you're going to ask is, well, how big a gain margin is big enough? What do we mean by close and far? And what we're going to tell you is, generally speaking, gain margin should be at least three. So if it's less than three, you're probably too close. I did use the word probably, you'll notice there, not definitely. Now, this is not a design target. We're not saying you should set the gain margin to three. We're simply saying it's a typical minimum suggestion. All right, it's a start point. You may well have an infinite gain margin, but still the closed loop has very bad behavior. And you saw that on the previous slide where I could multiply the system by whatever k I liked. If I just go back there, oh, oh no, looks like I can't go back very easily. And, but if you go back yourself, you'll see that the Nyquist diagram could go very close to minus one without actually going through minus one. But your gain margin was still infinite. So a large gain margin doesn't necessarily imply good behavior. OK, but a small gain margin will usually result in unsatisfactory behavior. So it only goes one way. So what you've got is small gain margin implies bad, whereas large gain margin implies nothing. OK, so it's not a two-way inference. It's only a one-way inference, and you need to remember that. So some conclusions. The videos define the gain margin, which is an important design tool with frequency response methods. The gain margin is the multiplicative factor which will cause the Nyquist diagram to go through the minus one point. To compute the gain margin, you start by determining the phase crossover frequency. So that's important. If you want the gain margin, you start from the phase diagram. There will exist cases where the gain margin is undefined or infinite because the Nyquist diagram does not cross the negative real axis. And a typical design guidance is the gain margin must be at least three, although beyond this, the actual size is not always a good indicator of close loop performance. So if it's smaller than three, you will probably have bad performance, but if it's bigger than three, it's not necessarily informative. <laughs>